Hello there. Uh, today's video is all about painting a picture of what it really is like at Ubisoft and what's been happening since the allegations were first made about Ubisoft and, you know, everyone just kind of moved on. Well, not everyone, but mostly the industry just kind of moved on. The last video was about, like, how they were able to get away with it and I don't really know. I was just making ideas here and there, right? This is just compiling and building a timeline in that regard, you know? And um, I have no idea if there'll be more videos about Ubisoft after this. There, I'm sure there's stuff that I've missed. This could be a long one as well, but I don't think that's a problem in this regard. I know there's an insecurity on YouTube of people not wanting to make long videos because they feel like people's attention spans won't watch it through, but at the same time, I think horrendous stories of abuse and covering them with the care and detail they require is a little bit more important than personal insecurity, in my opinion. So that's the idea with this video today. I have four stories lined up, each will be in their own section and uh, we'll go through it in detail and I'll offer my opinion like I usually do. I would say I hope you enjoy this video but when you talk about the subjects that I do and I have been doing for the last several months I'm not sure anyone can really say they enjoyed the video so apologies for that. So What's interesting is that this first article written by The Verge in October 2nd, 2020 kind of points out like what the company is like from an inside perspective and how bad the problem actually was and we all didn't know about it. So I think it's a good place to start. And obviously we're building a timeline here. So I'm doing it in order of publication of the articles. There's probably so much I've actually missed because, you know, they're huge. They employ over 18,000 people, Ubisoft, in various different countries, Canada, France, Singapore. I think that's all of them, but I could be wrong, you know. Never assume that I'm perfectly in the right about everything. Always go and look past it so like if you watch a video about this ubisoft situation don't just assume that i've covered everything if you're interested in the topic go do a little bit of googling yourself and then read some articles to educate yourself if you will this is what people mean by the way when they say educate yourself you know search for the information on your own time when you're comfortable because you know, this is a topic that's difficult to talk about for many people, right? And the expectation that they become part-time teachers about any social issue in their spare time is a lot to handle, especially when we're going through a major global event like a pandemic, you know? Just take the time to challenge your own views or seek information for yourself, but be aware where you get the information from obviously but that's why you should never really overreact when someone's telling you to educate yourself it's not like a personal attack like a lot of people out here are struggling and just don't have the brain capacity or they're neurodivergent you know and the struggles that come with neurodivergency often lead to miscommunication or misunderstanding anyway or just being exhausted by socialising, you know. The world would be a better place if more people took responsibility for their own actions, but also showed more compassion. And that's my preachy speech out of the way for this. But let's get back into it. Ubisoft's survey reveals that 25% of employees have seen or experienced workplace misconduct. On a previous take for this, I struggled dividing 18 into 4. So I know it's over 4,000 employees there. 4,000 people under your employ have seen or experienced workplace misconduct. That's a problem. If you didn't know, that's a problem. How do you rebuild the culture at Ubisoft? How do you actually do it? Because it's easy for me to sit here 
and point out the problems, but it's going to be even more difficult to actually fix them because personally, with 4,000 people being affected in various ways, obviously it's much worse to experience it than just to see it. Like if it's happening to you, it's gonna be much more difficult to get a resolution than somebody who just sees it. Because to be fair, the people who see it might also be perpetrators yourself. You can't possibly know this is all going down, you know. But for anyone who says it was just a small thing, a quarter of all employees at a massive corporation is normalization, really. It's not like one or two people. The sheer amount of stories of people who don't come out and speak what they saw, what they've been through, it's nearly always underreported. And this has shown it was underreported a year ago. So it's actually much more serious than we're all led to believe. And obviously, I mean, the subtitle is CEO Yves Gilmeau promises that changes will take place. But if you just say changes will take place and never say what changes will take place, you can just do whatever small little thing and just say that was the change. Oh, we're making changes. What are those changes? I don't know. Or whatever. It's avoiding the question, isn't it? But here we go. Ubisoft CEO Yves Gilmeau has published the results of an employee survey undertaken by the company over the summer following allegations of endemic harassment and toxicity. And the results are eye-opening. Unless you've been following this situation for a while. Although, to a certain degree, even I wasn't expecting 25%, to be honest. In the anonymous survey of nearly 14,000 employees, one in four respondents said that they'd either witness or experience workplace misconduct themselves in the past two years. And one in five said that they didn't feel fully respected or safe in the work environment. The results also noted that women or non-binary employees witnessed or were more likely to experience or witness harassment than men. Now, it was 14,000 here of the employees that did it. So that's a huge chunk of Ubisoft who didn't respond to it. Um, what's a quarter of 14,000? Oh, dear. Um, it's 3,000 something because four times four is 16, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know that. Why? Why do I have to try and do maths? I left school 11 years ago. That, like, you don't use these skills. <laughs> Hence why I'm struggling. But yeah, it's obviously an anonymous survey, which tells me that people are still afraid to speak out because they fear retribution by the people who did it or the company itself, you know? Or they're just sick and tired of this entire culture perpetuating for so long and nothing being done about it like personally how you a quick guide if you will of how you fix the culture at your company one change of leadership entirely at the top because the people who oversaw this were compliant or complacent and Nobody's going to have the uh, confidence that in Yves Gilmeau to turn it around because he allowed this on his watch, whether he knew about it or not. You start from change at the top, but that's not going to happen. And then individually, every single person who replied to this survey, you make and foster a climate where you encourage them to come out and try to individually deal with each specific case properly and probably that means getting rid of the HR department entirely and replacing it with something else because the HR was one of the worst things about this entire situation it's a PR rep for the company effectively but yeah it was in the past two years as well past two years so it's not like something that was happening five years ago or six years ago because two years is harder to ignore than like if somebody said oh this all happened 10 years ago we would all go well it's a passage of time even though time doesn't exist as a social construct now that we've been in a pandemic um <laughs> They would just think that these things naturally sort themselves out over time, which obviously 
they don't. Even if it was 10 years ago, you'd still have the same people working there if they haven't left due to, you know, mistreatment. The people who allegedly did it would still work there, wouldn't they? And that's a problem because then they'd be able to hurt more people over a longer period of time. And two years is almost the amount of time we've been in this pandemic, to be honest, at this point. I know this was written a year ago, but it's not, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a very long time. It will take, honestly, I have no idea how long it would take to fix Ubisoft for the employees. I don't think you can without drastic change. The change that shareholders or the higher-ups really don't want, you know. They want to do enough to be seen to do something so that they get the positive PR, but don't do too much that it changes leadership roles. And obviously, given what the experience is of being a trans person or anything under the umbrella of the gender identity, you just ask somebody what it's like being non-binary online, and then you'll realise that this is very normal, unfortunately, that they'll be harassed just for being different or being themselves, and being told, like, I don't know any other, like, identity that's constantly challenged and told that it doesn't exist on a daily basis. I really don't. And, like, you're all making it up, or you're mentally ill or damaged or some way. That must be a really exhausting way to live. And, you know, very famous people perpetuate that idea it empowers normal people to just, you know, go along with their day and just, you know, think about that and sometimes go on the offensive, if you will, you know. It's sad to think about, really. So all of my trans and non-binary pals, I'll do my best to, you know, speak out against people who look like me, who uh, are very cruel to you, for want of a better word. I was going to say mean, but it goes for much further than mean, really. These people are already more likely to struggle with mental health issues than the average person, and then you're attacking them on top of the very thing that, you know, gives them all of that misery. The fact that they want to be somebody else, they just want to be who they are, and they can't do that without being harassed and targeted or even worse, face violence, you know? Jesus. So yeah, it is usually men who commit harassment. When we say this, right, it's not that they can't face harassment. It's just the trend that it's men who's usually doing it, right? I say this as a man to other men maybe listening to this. We're not attacking you based on gender, right? There's no need to be offended if you're a man who's never committed harassment, right? It doesn't apply to you. So there's no need for not all men. Ubisoft says that the survey, which was conducted by a third-party research firm and results of which were provided to The Verge, started shortly after the initial allegations of sexual harassment, misconduct, sexism, racism, and toxic workplace environment came to light earlier this summer. We already know... Um, the host of Ubisoft executives and creative leaders have even been fired or stepped down. Most have stepped down, but I'll, get, I'll just give you, like, some names at this point. Tommy Francois, Maxime Belland, Ashraf Ishmael, Sergei Haskaway, and Yanis Malat. Ubisoft veteran Michel Ansel has also recently departed the company, and this was due to an ongoing investigation into his into the toxic management of Beyond Good and Evil 2. Gilmo's letter goes on to explain how the company hopes to begin to deal with these issues and help create a safer and better work environment at Ubisoft. He notes that the company has new mechanisms in place to anonymously report harassment accusations so that they can be investigated further. Ubisoft is also revising its mandatory company code of conduct and conducting compulsory anti-sexism and anti-harassment training across the company. Well, it certainly needs that training. I've always wondered, though, about the effectiveness of it, because somebody who commits harassment or is sexist, they're comfortable enough to do 
those things because it's so normalized within the culture, right? If you tell a racist to stop being racist, they're not, they're unlikely to. They'll either say that they're not being racist or proceed to use coded dog whistles. So it's like they're winking to racism, but they're not outwardly saying it by careful control of their language. So you'd either put them underground or they would vehemently argue that they aren't racist or something. Or you get the people that are like, well, I just don't fucking care. I'm just going to be racist anyway. And I just wonder, like, what that actually does to improve the lives of those who are on the end of this, personally. Ubisoft is also working to hire a new head of diversity and inclusion and new vice presidents. And it aims to have women comprise at least 24% of Ubisoft staff by 2023, compared to the current 22%. I mean... 2% isn't a large jump, is it? I can see why you would do this. I know some people are going to claim this is sexism, but, like, the majority of the people accused have been men, right? So if you hire more women, in theory, it's less likely for them to be abusers. It can happen. It's very rare, but it can happen. But, you know, by having a more diverse workplace the idea is here is that the company will be more progressive internally and less abusive right which is ironic because if before every game you play of theirs they're constantly celebrating diversity you know it's almost like companies do that for good pr and stonkage but whatever Those changes are in addition to previously announced efforts for increased diversity and representation at the company, which include new mentorship programs for women and underrepresented minorities. Everyone at Ubisoft should feel confident and have the same opportunities, regardless of their gender, skin colour, religion, age or other individual traits. Based on the way the company has handled business for the last few decades, though, Ubisoft still seems to have a long way to go before it reaches that point. Well, yeah, I mean... First of all, stop having abusive workplace culture. That's number one priority. And then, you know, increase diversity. You know, I remember being against this, but, you know, more representation and, you know, challenging the old guard, if you will. These people who maybe right now are very much a minority within the company, the more um, people that have similar experiences to you with life the more comfortable you'll be within your surroundings kind of thing you know and I think that's the plan that they're going with we'll have to see within the coming years whether that actually happens or not you know a dangerous thing happened I had a thought during the brief moment before recording this part I thought about How do you expect employees at Ubisoft when a huge chunk of them are uncomfortable with their working environment, right? And we're talking like 3,000, maybe 4,000. That was just people that replied to the survey. Many people didn't, right? Many people may not have wanted to point this out. How do you expect them to produce their best work when they're uncomfortable and nothing's being done to ease that discomfort, really, at all? And probably most of the people that did the bad things at the company are still there or got to walk away into the sunset before things really came to hit the pan so to speak you can't really you really can't and I wonder if that's been a slight contributing factor to some of the games that Ubisoft made that well didn't do so well certainly nowhere near the fault of the people being abused is most definitely the abuser's fault and just you know the same creative direction from Ubisoft let's just make all of our games have the same kind of free open world in it you know great wonderful they want to do uh, live service games more now and it's like live service games started becoming a thing like in 2015 you want to start doing it in 2021 when everyone's fucking tired of it like jesus christ man stop i've had enough it's time to stop get some help but yeah the cynic in me knew that this was going to happen and this story exists i already did know that this story exists because i've seen it in the past who would have thought 
not me, that the things that we saw at the end of the last article were just gestures designed to get people to go back to work and uh, consume Ubisoft games. And it probably worked. Ubisoft has reportedly made minimal changes following abuse allegations. What a shocking revelation that, you know. A huge company with horrendous work practices has barely done anything about it. It's just waiting for it to all blow over. If only somebody had made a video about how they were able to get away with it. Oh yeah, I did, didn't I? As legal proceedings are kick-started, internal sources point at the lack of accountability since reports of toxic culture last year. An investigation by French publication Le Telegram, I'm really sorry if you're French, like, I've been to France once, didn't know the language, was 11, people were rude to me there, I got upset, failed French at GCSE as well, you know, I, I'm just terrible at pronunciation. It was published in early May revealed that the first wave of legal proceedings was due to start this month in relation to the harassment cases. The collective action is led by, oh dear, Solidaire, Solidaire's Informatique Jeu Video, a games workers union that had previously called for testimonies to build a case against Ubisoft. I am once again apologising for my pronunciation. Since the wave of accusations targeting Ubisoft's toxic culture, which also pointed at serious dysfunction in its HR departments, the company has attempted to make changes, but the impact of these changes seems to have been minimal so far, the publication reported. Director of HR Cecile Cornet stepped down following the allegations, alongside other Ubisoft executives in July 2020, has only just left the company and is being replaced by Chief People Officer Anika Grant, who previously spent three years at Uber. Ubisoft has previously appointed Rashi Sikh Seeker as VP of Global Diversity and Inclusion, who also came from Uber. But an elective representative from Ubisoft's Social and Economic Committee said that they don't expect anything to come out of these appointments, as the HR staff that who covered the harassment issues are still in position. And obviously, that's a problem, because if HR didn't take you seriously, and those people who employed you, who obviously were probably under the orders of people higher up, but they also weren't willing to help. Why would you go to HR? You shouldn't go to HR, because HR is just a PR wing for the company itself. You know, they don't care about employees. They, they just don't. We can see by the way that they've treated their employees in the past and the fact that various different companies haven't taken it seriously or haven't taken enough steps to do anything about it. They just don't care. Some of the men at the heart of the harassment accusations are also still in their jobs, such as Florent Castelnarac, who heads Ubisoft-owned Nadio, and who was accused of harassment by a dozen employees. That's a new name I've not heard. A union representative said management is protecting him. Or Ubisoft Singapore director Hugh Ricor, who stepped down in November, but still works at Ubisoft in a different role, according to his LinkedIn profile. In Canada, nothing has changed since the appointment of Christophe Diren, who happens to be... Yves Gilmour's cousin has that for nepotism. In July 2020, a source told Le Telegram, what's more, new harassment cases have been reported since, but those who reported the issues were sidelined in December 2020. Initiatives were put forward by employee groups to try and help solve the crisis, including measures of positive action to make sure more women are hired at Ubisoft, but the idea has not been addressed by management. Among the changes made at the company, the firm has recently reworked its code of conduct, which until now didn't mention harassment as a non-negotiable interdiction, according to an elective representative of the Games Workers Union, STGJV. The new version will be published this summer. 20,000 members of staff have had a half day training following the crisis, with managers given more advanced sessions focused on accountability. 
We perceive a desire from management to leave the crisis from t summer 2020 behind as it represents a risk for the group's durability, but training must be renewed regularly and offered to new staff. For now, this re request has not been addressed. An update to the story. A Ubisoft representative responded to a request for comments saying, over a period of several months, Ubisoft has implemented major changes across its organization, internal processes and procedures in order to guarantee a safe, inclusive and respectful working environment for all team members. The representative listed a number of actions the publisher has taken from external investigations of all allegations to anonymous reporting tools and mandatory training on appropriate workplace conduct. They also appoint, pointed to the company's revamped code of conduct, the hirings of Grant and Seeker, as well as the appointment of Lindwin Sauer as head of workplace culture. These concrete actions demonstrate the profound changes that have taken place at every level of the company. Additional initiatives are underway and are being rolled out over the coming months. We are committed to strengthening our culture and values in the long term to help ensure every team member at Ubisoft is heard, respected and valued in the workplace. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't think that they're doing enough, really. I really don't. I don't. I can't see how much of that is going to change. Like one of the things that literally said we're doing training, they said it was a half day. And I'll be honest, I've had training stuff, you know. I never pay attention to it during because, and it's almost like they do it deliberately. They bring you in really early before you're even awake to do these things. And you're just not really present in the moment. So imagine you know obviously hopefully people at ubisoft will take that training seriously but all it takes is just a few people not to be present or not paying attention and it's just very much limits the effect doesn't it you know and when the sources inside the company are saying that nothing's really changed things have stayed the same these gestures are not going to make people think oh wow ubisoft's well, actually, they are very different than what they were before. Like, nobody's going to think that. Maybe if you want to consume Ubisoft games without any guilt whatsoever, you will take this very positively. These concrete actions, I'm not sure if you heard the change in my voice when I said that, out of pure irony, um, don't go anywhere near far enough at all. And I can provide you an example of how the company hasn't changed with the very next story we're covering. And what a segue that is. So Yves Jumeau did obviously respond to the previous article back in May, but he's a slippery eel. We've heard enough of him over the past two videos. Just watch my previous video and what he suggested he was going to do. And, you know, me personally, I'm more of a cynic. If they had changed so much, we wouldn't have this story coming out of Ubisoft Singapore, would we? And I've said it many times, if you employ your family and your friends, and they're close friends, and you've known them for 32 years, like Sergey Haskaway, um, how do you not know what he's like at work? And that is the million dollar question, isn't it? How does he not know that what went on? All he says is that those in higher up positions within the company betrayed him and the ideals and he never betrayed anyone or did that. It was like, just because you didn't personally do the abuse doesn't mean you didn't help create a culture where nobody got punished In the abusers were protected, which they were. They've been protected for years, hence why it's only just come out now. You just have to doubt his drive to commit to any change really when he's the man that was there when this was happening because if he leaves even voluntarily because he'll still earn money from ubisoft if he steps down that tells people at the company that nobody in theory is safe from punishment and accountability from this entire situation which is surely the message you would want to send 
But this story is from Ubisoft. Uh, Ubisoft? Well, I mean, technically it is. But it's from Eurogamer on the 17th of August, 2021. Watchdog launches investigation into Ubisoft Singapore over alleged unfairness and sexual harassment. Obviously, we had it at the start, but I'm here to remind you, trigger warning for sexual harassment and or assault. Because there'll be a little bit of a topic discussion about it in a few minutes. So if this is where you want to check out, by all means, um, I hope you have a wonderful day. According to an investigation by Kotaku, staff at Ubisoft Singapore, which is home to around 500 staff and is currently working on the troubled skull and bones, allegedly suffered from sexual harassment, racial pay disparities and bullying by managers, as well as bad projects and toxic leaders. Now, bad projects and toxic leaders is literally skull and bones. Like They took the naval combat element out of Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, and wanted to turn it into its entirely online pirate game thing. And it's just been in development hell for years and you're in development hell if you have bad management it's never the workers that aren't working hard enough to make the game good let's be real for a second it's literally never that a thing i'm surprised at is that racial pay disparities are alleged unfairness in the title it seems like that part is being underplayed to me like wouldn't you put alleged racial pay disparities because if you put that, then it became not only a much more incendiary news story that will get even more people to click on it. You're also not bearing one of the worst things regarding it. Because it does sound a bit racist, isn't it? If people are being paid differently based on skin colour, right? Who is in charge of payroll there? Richard fucking Spencer? Jesus. And this is a company that has, like, had racism alleged about as well, you know. We've obviously focused on the sexual harassment and assault elements, which allegedly are going on in Singapore as well. The thing why, I wonder if this was not as wildly talked about, because not many people know Ubisoft Singapore ex exists, really. And this was all coming out while Activision Blizzard was the big story for the same reason you know so it may have inadvertently buried it i don't know but obviously all of that is really bad it's an incredibly poor look if you're just trying to move on from the previous situation as if it didn't happen and it's still happening the newspaper though that reported this funny name literally the opposite of pink news the straits times i'm aware that that's obviously like the local geographical or region of where it's based but that's that it it tickled me and i thought i'd share it with you but yes the national watchdog for fair employment practices has launched an investigation into ubisoft singapore over the claims the tripartite alliance for fair and progressive employment practices you can tell i've said that a lot of times today urged anyone with knowledge of any criminal conduct such as sexual harassment and assault to report such incidents to the police. Now, I really, really hope that the police in Singapore take harassment, sexual harassment and assault much more seriously than the police do in the UK and US. Because specifically speaking about the UK police here, I've known multiple people in my life that have had been assaulted in this manner. And obviously it's horrendous and they've had to relive the most traumatic event in their entire life um been treated in a way that makes them feel like they're being doubted um they're trying to catch out any sort of inconsistency because the way that people get off of these things like the brock turner case you have judges that you know are more concerned about the future career prospects of the rapist or alleged rapist or whatever you know and it creates a atmosphere that makes people less likely to speak about it and specifically the treatment that i've known a few people have had by the police in the uk got them 
to not press charges in the end. And that doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means I believe them and they were treated terribly. So they didn't want to relive all of that any more than they have to do on a daily basis because the conviction rate for sexual assault is incredibly low in the UK and it's a very difficult crime to prove. So when we have everyone on the internet saying, well, innocent until proven guilty, it's kind of a problem in this case, isn't it? You know, if the crime is difficult to prove, that doesn't necessarily mean the person is innocent, you know? The default sides with the abuser in this regard, doesn't it? But I really hope they treat people who are survivors of this kind of thing with the basic common decency that they deserve because I know the UK police just simply doesn't. And it's sad, isn't it? Incredibly depressing to think about. People who are already struggling are made to feel worse by the people that are supposed to help them. It doesn't go bare thinking about, really. Anyway, on to the managing director who manages to avoid any sort of accountability in this entire article. And I have no idea how he's managed to do that. Because if you're a managing director at the studio that all these allegations are coming out about, you'd think he'd be criticised somewhat. But Daryl Long said this. It's very important that we can talk about these things and that we acknowledge what's going on in our industry right now. What about acknowledging what's going on at your own studio, huh, bruh? But that will make sense, what he just said. Because he'd let the game, or the proverbial cat, out of the bag with his next statement, which is incredibly transparent. Because you'll see what immediately came to his mind first when he said this. We need to start to change the way we are perceived and the way we are act internally as well. So, he's more worried about the public perception of Ubisoft versus actually doing better for their employees. I'm not surprised, but it's a bit of a faux pas there. You know, it literally is. We know that they think this way, or I assumed that they think this way, and now there's some sort of evidence because he's spoken in a weird manner like that. You don't have to worry about the way you are perceived if you do better and can, you know, provide evidence that you've done better then everyone would be like, okay, well, Ubisoft are doing better now or whatever. He's worried about the change in the way they perceive because they still want their games to be incredibly successful for monetary reasons, of course. This even though, right, Ubisoft staff said the company continues to protect and promote known offenders and their allies, right? And then this investigation into Ubisoft Singapore has happened after that. Interesting. Over 1,000 current and former employees across 32 studios signed an open letter in solidarity with Activision Blizzard staff following that lawsuit, you know, where Activision Blizzard was said to be a breeding ground for harassment and discrimination against women. The letter slammed Ubisoft leadership's empty promises in response to allegations of systemic discrimination, harassment and bullying within the company and proposed an industry-wide collaboration to agree a set of rules and processes for handling reports of these offences. Now that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Because you cannot trust the company themselves to deal with it properly. Because that's what led to the situation. You know, Ubisoft's HR was culpable. Activision Blizzard's HR was culpable. Led into this situation that people felt like they couldn't report it because they weren't being taken seriously. As the letter noted, Ubisoft became embroiled in its own disturbing reckoning last summer when employees began calling out toxic work conditions within the company, including allegations of serious sexual misconduct aimed at members of senior management. Yet despite Yves Gilmour's assurance he would do everything in his power to ensure that everyone feels welcome, respected and safe, the open letter said little had changed. According to the Straits Times, if Ubisoft Singapore is found to be in breach of the Ministry of Manpowers, wow, wow, that is. That gave me a very interesting uh, mental image there. <laughs> Fair consideration framework 
it could be barred from applying for new work passes for foreign staff or renewing existing ones for between one and two years. The police may investigate sexual misconduct that involves criminal offences. Those found guilty can be fined and or jailed and in some cases caned. Okay, you know what I said about the police taking it more seriously? Yeah, I don't think they will, will they? If they're as backwards as that, they'll probably blame the survivors, like other cultures do. Ubisoft Singapore responded to the Straits Times report to say it had investigated, invested in a dedicated learning path to support Singaporeans and help staff take on leadership opportunities. Compensation is determined by role responsibility, market practices and performance. Long insisted the studio does not tolerate harassment, discrimination or misconduct of any kind and highlighted the company had hired a third party agency to look into complaints. I understand that Ubisoft Singapore had been mentioned in the news lately. I acknowledge that the studio has seen some challenges over the past decade and there is still work to be done about our studio culture. I don't know if he could have done any more of a basic response to that, you know? That's quite something, isn't it? Really basic. So, that is the video. I have no idea what comes next, whether there's more Activision Blizzard news that comes out, or more regarding Ubisoft that comes out, or I look at other companies that have similar situations and workplace cultures at their company, or, you know, I go back to my word document of ideas for youtube videos because i've only actually made a couple of those and that would be a little bit more fun for a little bit i don't know i have nothing lined up this time so it could be a while it might not we i have no idea i've learned from past mistakes of saying what will come next once again i hope everyone's doing okay you know things are tough right now aren't they you know and Exposing yourself to this kind of thing isn't going to make you feel any better, is it? So make sure to look after yourselves and, you know, if you've watched this all the way through, unwind by doing something fun or else. But yeah, once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, hopefully.